It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. You're listening to us in your neighborhood, from coast to coast, and around the world. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Joan Herman, author, speaker, and your host. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Joining me is Dr. Bruce Lipton, whose work on the relationship between the mind and body has changed the way we think about our lives and our health. Bruce is a cell biologist and is an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and spirit. He is the best-selling author of The Biology of Belief, The Honeymoon Effect, and Spontaneous Evolution. Welcome, Bruce. Thanks for joining us today. I am so happy to be here and speaking with you, Joan. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. Well, you know, Bruce, I am so happy that you're able to come back on the show. You've always been a favorite of our listeners, and it's been 10 years now since your book, The Biology of Belief, was first published. And looking back over the past decade, what do you believe has changed in the past 10 years? Well, we're in the process of a major evolutionary upheaval, Joan, that this this world is in a, a place of recognizing that uh, there's a time for us to, to change the way we're living and that apparently it's going to be right now because uh, we're creating uh, such havoc in, in nature and undermining the web of life that we even threaten our own existence. So it's coming down to the part in the last 10 years, the crises that we are seeing every day, like healthcare crisis, fuel crisis, climate change crisis, economic crisis, go on and on. Uh, and, and we see them build like building every day. And what people are not recognizing is that while we see all those individual crises, like looking at this tree and this tree and this tree, if you pull far enough back, you can see, oh, my God, all these trees are part of one giant forest. They're all the same. Uh, and that what that really represents is that we are not sustainable. We are not living in harmony with each other. We're not living in harmony with the planet. And nature is altering uh, profoundly life on this planet as a result of how we're interfering with it. So what's the point? The point is we've come to a crossroads, uh, and, and crisis ignites evolution, meaning when you get to this crisis, well, it says, okay, you can't keep doing the same thing now because that's causing the crisis. Mm -hmm. Time to change. And, and so uh, this is a remarkable time period because uh, it's, it's so important to uh, understand that we have to uh, relearn who we are. We have to relearn who, how powerful we are uh, because uh, most of us have been programmed to see ourselves as uh, vulnerable, frail, biological creatures, uh, always you know, prone to viruses, bacteria, parasites, and all that kind of stuff. And it turns out, this this is so untrue <laughs> mm -hmm. that we are so very powerful except our, uh, we now recognize our attitudes and emotions and beliefs actually uh, alter our biology to the extent that um, we are creating a healthcare crisis in this world just through our thoughts, not because of genetics, not because of uh, anything in the biology. It's because our biology and our mind uh, are not in coherence with each other sir, because our mind has been unfortunately misprogrammed. And you know, Bruce, you just said that it goes against what we've all been taught. And interestingly, about a year ago, I was a keynote speaker for a lung associations. It was a kickoff campaign for fundraising. And I was speaking to a group of probably 80 to 85 medical professionals, ranging from case managers to therapists to oncologists. And I always bring up you in my presentation and I and I asked the group who's heard of epigenetics and I was floored Bruce I think 3 to 4 people people that are working with cancer patients 
had heard of epigenetics. So three or four. three or four raised their hand that they had oh heard God. of this. And I was, I mean, I went home and this is all I could talk about for weeks. These are people that are dealing with cancer patients and how could they not know this? So we've come so far, but what is it we need to do in order to hit those other 75 people? Well, uh, you know, if we're going to be really truthful and honest about this, is that um, uh, having been a professor in a medical school and seeing how the system works, uh, I have to tell you right now, the, the biggest problem in our healthcare system is the intervention of um, uh, corporate enterprises controlling health and, and most importantly, uh, pharmaceutical corporations, uh, because they manipulate the system. They have the money and they run the system. What's the point? Well. Look, uh, from a biological, medical, scientific point of view, the concept of energy and electromagnetic fields and healing and manipulating all of biology with just energy signals has been known since 1930. Basically, it's the foundation of what we call energy medicine today. And you say, well, what about energy medicine? Well, it's not included with all the other medicine. I go, why? Uh, and the answer is simple. If you could put energy into a capsule, then we would, we'd be doing Edison, you know, energy medicine today we, because a pharmaceutical companies would be very happy to sell for you a capsule of energy. But because you can't quantify, quantify it and put it in units and sell it uh, uh, as units, it has no interest to the medical profession, not medical people, but to the pharmaceutical industry. You can't sell it, then there's no reason for it. So if I tell you there's two ways to heal yourself, you can do it through mind and energy and thought, or you can do it through chemical drugs then the whole idea is this. We have been programmed to ignore the mind energy and stop, and we have been programmed to go buy the drugs. That's a program. So what we have is a business of healthcare, and it's one of the biggest businesses, but is it directed toward the patient? The answer is no. Why? We have sicker people, more sick people today than ever with the largest medical profession ever, and all of a sudden you say, well, well, then the idea that the medical profession is stalling this in many ways, like, no, uh, illness is getting worse and medical profession is getting more profitable. That's the way it goes. So your show, to me, is very important because if you understand the new science of epigenetics, which really got to you when those people didn't understand it, mm -hmm. oh, my God, this is a revolution. Mm -hmm. that you can heal without drugs if you understand uh, the nature of mind and attitude and all that. Uh, you can change that and you can have control of your life. Uh, and to me, that's why this program is so very important, is to give back the power to people because uh, we've been disempowered by beliefs that are not true. Well, and that's, you know, you've, you've used words like empowerment and revolution, and, and these are the things that people forget. We have the power. We just need to acquire the knowledge. And people like you that are out there doing this amazing work, you're teaching us if, if, if everyone would just take the time to learn it and take their power back. Well, that, that's the most beautiful part, you know, and, and I love it because, uh, you know, nature helps me out with some, some great stories, analogies, and, and here's one that most people have seen the movie called The Matrix. We've all been programmed. That's a fact of science. That's a fact of child development. That's built into the system. That uh, The fact is that uh, these programs are up to 70% or more negative, disempowering, self-sabotaging. And then it, then it turns out that these programs that we get, and, and that's usually between the last trimester of pregnancy and first seven years. Whatever these programs that we download at that time about how to behave and respond and how to live and who we are, those are the programs that run our lives 95% of the time. The thousands of rules uh, of how to live your life and how to behave and who you are and what you can do and what you can't do are downloaded into your subconscious mind in the first seven years of life. And then consciousness begins around age seven, and then we use that data. So here's the problem. We now know that because the conscious mind, which picks in at seven, can also think, it's not always paying attention. So I say, Joan, what, what are you doing on Monday at five o'clock? If you seriously answer that question, you have to realize this. The moment I asked the question, you had to go inside your head. Mm -hmm. and you had to think. And you're in there, some little Rolodex thing, you know, trying to figure out what you're doing on Monday. And I say, but what was the consequence of thinking? And I say, for that moment, you were not paying attention to what was going on outside because <laughs> you were mm -hmm. in thought. And, and I say, well, does that mean the moment you're thinking, you stop, your body just stops, like you're walking down the street and you have a thought and then you freeze and then the thoughts finish and then you start walking? I said, no, you're walking down the street, you have a thought, you're still walking down the street or driving the car. I go, yeah, but if the conscious mind's busy in thought, then who's running the show when the conscious mind's thinking? I go, oh, the default is, is go back to the subconscious programs. 
You know how to walk. It's in the subconscious. You know how to drive the car. It's in the subconscious. You know how to behave. Why? That you got programmed. And so then we come down to the the really most important part, John, and that is this. It turns out that uh, science reveals that we are in thought at least 95% of the day. I say, well, why is that relevant? And I say, well, then here's the the real you know math. It says if you're thinking 95% of the day, Day, that means you're defaulting to subconscious programs 95% of the day. So your life is essentially not run by your conscious mind, which is wishes and desires. Your life is run by the downloaded programs, and they're not even yours. You got them from other people. So conclusion, the idea of the matrix, we've been programmed. Yes, we were programmed for the first seven years. Our behavior, who we are, how we respond, all the characters, characteristics of our life are in some way downloaded. And then I say, and then every day of life after that, 95% of our, our biology and behavior and everything is coming from those programs. And, and then I say, oh, you know, so our lives are actually print out of all our downloaded programs because the programs are running 95% of the time. And then I say, yeah, look at our lives. We struggle. We have troubles. We, you know, we, we live in fear. We have all these kinds of issues, everyday life. And then I say, here's the fun part. What's different the day you fall in love with somebody? I say, well, what do you mean? I say, well, the moment you fall in love, that moment, life is like heaven, heaven on earth. Life is beautiful. You, you're so excited about everything, and, and life is, you know, wonderful, and it's just like, you know, you have so much energy, you have so much excitement, you're, you're healthy, you're glowing. Life is beautiful no matter all those struggles you had. At that moment, they disappear. And at this moment, your life is, is so extraordinarily wonderful. Now, it may not last long, but there's a period of time called the honeymoon. I say, Okay, understand this. What was the difference between struggling your whole life and then one day falling in love and the next day you have heaven on earth? And the answer is, in the Matrix story, they, they have an opportunity to take either of two pills, a blue pill or a red pill. The blue pill you take in, you go back into the program, life is just the way it's always been. Mm-hmm. But you take the red pill and you get out of the program. And I say, we now know from a scientific point of view that when you fall in love, it's the equivalent of taking the red pill. And, and, and the reason is very simple. If what you've been looking for your whole life is now in front of your face, this is not a time that you let your mind wander. You keep mindful. You keep your mind present. And I say, why is that relevant? Well, if you keep your mind present, you're not defaulting to the programs anymore. I say, oh, well, then it's like taking a red pill. You stay in love. You stay present. And all of a sudden, you're not playing the programs. Stop playing those sabotaging programs that you don't see, unfortunately. And you start creating from wishes and desires. And for that period called the honeymoon, when both people are not operating from subconscious programs but are operating from their own wishes and desires, then together they manifest wishes and desires. We have to recognize that, geez, most of our behavior is not even visible to us. And this is where the problem comes from because you start up in the morning, oh, I'm going to go out and be successful today. I'm going to find a great relationship. I'm going to have a great job. I'm going to heal myself. I have these great uh, conscious, uh, remember, conscious thoughts are wishes and desires. Yeah, this is what I want. Conscious thoughts, great relationship, you know, great job. And I go, great. We start out in the morning and that's our thought where we're going. And then at the end of the day, we come home and it's like beaten, going, God, we didn't get there again today. And the problem at that moment, just think of you come home from work, and it's like, I didn't get there again today. Here's where the problem is. Most people at that moment will then take the attitude, it's like, the universe is against me. Nature is against me. Why? Well, I wanted to have all these positive things, and I went out in the morning this way, and I came home with none of it. And so it's not me. And I go, yeah, when you were sitting and contemplating what you wanted, that was a conscious moment. Once you left the, that seat and started to activate your life in the room, you started to run from subconscious programs, and, and they're invisible. So when we come home at night, and it doesn't work, and the tendency is to believe that, oh, my God, this, the universe is not supporting me. Uh, fate is not in my favor. Uh, I say, this is an unfortunate situation because our own invisible behavior was what was the problem. Your own behavior is invisible, and if it's a negative behavior here, you're the one that doesn't see it, you're sabotaging it, but therefore you're only left with a conclusion that, well, it's not me, it must be something else. And it's, this is the wake-up call. This is a time for, oh, my God, our minds are the ultimate control of our genetics and our behavior. And, and, and we have to let go of the belief that most people, that large number of people in your audience are like, oh, no, all of this is controlled by genes. <laughs> you're just a victim. And, and if you're a victim, you have no power. And then, you know, pay us some money and then we'll fix you. And it turns out that's a belief system is dead and 
bad. And the time of waking up now is it's we who control this. And if it's been invisible, then that's where the problem comes from. But this is why I, I love the opportunity of, of speaking with you, Joan, on this, because this is the opportunity for people to see I can change this if I can grab hold of my mind and the programs. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. The book is The Biology of Belief, 10th Anniversary Edition by Dr. Bruce Lipton. If you would like to learn more about Bruce and his work, you can visit brucelipton.com. Bruce, thank you so much for being here. Every time that you're here, I wish that I had more time to spend with you. But as you said, it is so important that we wake up and we take back our power and that we realize our minds are the ultimate control of everything. So Thank you, thank you for being back with us again. And then, Joan, as again, I wanted to say how much I appreciate you doing this. And also, let me just emphasize how much I appreciate your audience, because the idea is once a person becomes knowledgeable in this matter of self, of how you work, uh, and knowledge is power, then the knowledge that we were just talking about today is fully self-empowerment. Because once you understand how it works, then you have the opportunity to be the master of it rather than the, the blind victim of what's going on. All of a sudden, if you can see, you can take control. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.